Hi everyone, we're Safe Wings Ottawa. Um, we're here at Ottawa U um, to do a Jane's Walk. Yeah, so for all of you who don't know about Safe Wings Ottawa, um, our goal is to um, provide research prevention and rescue of birds colliding with windows. We're an entirely volunteer-run organization based in Ottawa um, and supported by the Ottawa Field Naturalist Club. I'm here right now with Safe Wings volunteer Deborah and uh, an Ottawa U student, Emma, and we're here for the Jane's Walk right at Ottawa U in front of the LRT station. And so I'm going to pass it over to Deborah to explain what um, our event here today is for Jane's Walk. Okay, I'm just going to try and talk loud here over top of the trains that are just leaving. So welcome to our virtual Jane's Walk. Uh, Jane's Walk is an annual festival that is usually um, is the first weekend in May and it's an annual festival of free citizen-led um, walking conversations about our cities and this was um, inspired by Jane Jacobs um, and here's a quote from her that says downtown is for people so from the exploding metropolitan in 1957 so they've been going on as a, commor a commemoration for Jane and take place in hundreds of neighborhoods and cities around around the, the world and in Jane encouraged people to share their stories about their cities. So we're going to walk through um, virtually the University of Ottawa with you and then um, later next week we're going to add a piece on of downtown Ottawa so that you can explore how we can make Ottawa more bird friendly. And that's in celebration of National uh, Bird Collision Week, which is October 5th to uh, 11th. 11th. And that's uh, Global Bird Rescue Week for people who are looking online. So Global Bird Rescue Week, if you're looking online to hear more about it, where bird collisions are recorded. So I'm just, we're just going to head off now and take a look at some of the good buildings and some of the not so good buildings um, here at Ottawa U in terms of bird collisions. So this is one of the buildings um, at Ottawa U that's been designed for good um, heat energy, but unfortunately all of this glass is extremely dangerous for, for birds. closer so that you can see how the, the trees and things reflect in the windows. I managed to take scanning this building here but as you can see it looks like the clouds are there and so what happens is on a bright day the birds will think that this is the sky and then they'll fly right into this building and then they'll fall down about here and there I found three small birds um, here this year and um, mostly nuthatches and warblers and sometimes they'll be scavenged by gulls or um, in the case of here there's actually little ants that have been feeding them. So we're at the new STEM complex at Ottawa U and this is actually an example of a bird friendly building just giving you a nice view of it right now and Deborah will explain why this building is bird friendly. So the top of this building is particularly interesting because it was designed for to be an energy efficient building. So the round circles on the windows have a number of different dots and they expand or contract but there are dots all over the building. And so the pattern changes throughout the day and there's never a place where there's a distinct reflection. And you can see here, this is, this is a, they put dots sort of in, in the two inch perimeter and they're black dots, but it, it does, it break, they break up the reflection enough for a bird that a bird would not think that they could fly into this building. And in fact, I've spoken, um, to uh, the custodian of this building and he says he's never seen uh, a bird collide with this building. Great. Okay, Emma, you had a question? Yes, yeah, so I was just wondering what exactly does this 
spacing of the dots make it so important? Okay, so this, the bird is the, needs to be two inches spacing because otherwise the bird will think that the hole is big enough that they can fly through. And so a dense pattern like this do, um, is what's necessary so that they really know that this is a barrier, that glass is actually, that there's not, they can't go through. Because sometimes you'll see birds um, pecking on a, on a mirror on a car, and that's because they don't realize that that's a reflection. As humans, we figure that out, we figure it out really quickly. But a bird doesn't know that. It, he thinks it's another bird, and he's trying to defend his territory. about um, the LRT stations. We um, have been talking with OC Transpo about the stage one stations because we've discovered um, that there are bird collisions happening at the station. And this station is not one of the very bad ones, but it does demonstrate some of the issues because you'll see how transparent that glass is. There's not a reflective issue here, but what happens is birds will come in through the openings. So the open area is over here where the train comes, is going north and south. The birds will enter there and then they'll come to this shelter and they'll try and get out and they will collide with the glass from the inside of the building. Um, some of the buildings that are particularly bad in the city are uh, the Bayview Station and Herdman Station because they have much large, they also have reflective issues as well. Um, Pimacy and Lees have glass on three sides. And so the train comes in at the lower level, the birds come in at the lower level, they fly up and they try to get out and there's glass on three sides. And so we've had some collisions and we're doing a study. Do you want to tell them about the study? Yeah, so we are doing a study. Um, we have um, some Safe Wings patrollers out patrolling LRT stations on a regular basis. And we've also um, asked uh, the Red Vests and RTG employees if they find any dead birds to please give us a call. Um, and I'm going to dig my Safe Wings bag out and give you the number that you can call if you are riding the LRT. Um, regularly. Oh, you mean our Safe Banks number? Our safe banks. Yeah, so that's 613-216-8999. Um, and we're also asking anyone who takes the LRT or takes OC transporters around these stations to please uh, keep a lookout for birds and give us a call at that number if you find any. Yeah, and we do, um, if you're interested, we do have three pilot bus shelters. So we put feather friendly saving on three bus shelters, one um, at St. Paul's University, one on Albert um, Street just before the Pimacy Station, and then another one out, I'm not gonna remember the name of the street, but close to, I think it's Baseline, um, close to the Queensway Carlton Hospital. Up on the top, there's some more edges, and so the reflection 
is I start to get confused. Um, this one as well has got a, this particular facade has an issue of, this is a long, beautiful corridor of trees and greenery. So if a bird's flying down here, they're gonna think if they look here into this window, there's a reflection of the trees, but there's also a living wall inside. And so they'll think that they can continue to fly through. And so it gives that tunneling effect um, with the glass and then the living wall. And we've had some success with getting um, living walls, um, the lights turned off on the living walls. So this, that's maybe something we can talk to the sustainability uh, manager here at U of O about possibility of not having that lit at night because that also adds um, an additional hazard to the birds because they think they can go inside and see the green. And Amanda, you were just going to say about things that people can do at home in terms of plants inside? Yeah, just like a simple thing, in the same way that the living wall um, attracts birds to your windows. If you have plants that are close to windows, a simple thing you can do is just move your the plant pots for, away from the windows a little bit. Um, or treat your windows first with uh, Feather Friendly or another product. We have many on our website. Um, to choose from and so that, that we don't have to worry about birds colliding at home because we do know that up to 44% of the bird collisions actually do happen at residential um, buildings but we often don't have uh, the ability to patrol all those buildings as well as we do some of the ones downtown that are more easy for the public to access. Here at Montpetit Hall and this building has a couple of different issues. Um, first of all there's a glass walkway here and so we find we find birds that hit on the glass walkway. Um, they don't understand whether, and I actually found one there the other day, and when we walk, as we walk around, the feathers may still be there on the ground, but it was scavenged by a seagull. And so we'll just take a quick walk around. Um, as we go off here, you'll notice um, there's lots of greenery here, and we can actually hear birds chirping. I don't know if you can hear them, but there are birds living in this green space. So I was just wondering, you gave us these bags, but if we ever come across a live bird, what should we do? Okay, so act quickly, and you want to um, grab your net and approach the bird from the back and try and get the net over the bird and then gently pick it up and make sure it doesn't escape. And I'm noticing this is a bit wiggly. It's and, and so you would grab the bird and then squeak it out under the net and then hold on to the bird and pop it into the bag. Now it's good to have a bag sort of prepared because as you can see, if I drop the bar bird in here now, I had a hard time opening the bag. Right. So you wanna have your bag open up ahead of time and then, and then you fold it up and you put where you found it and then if it's and you fold it secure it don't reopen it because the bird may be able to fly out and phone the safe wings number that's listed on the bag now you'll notice here it says if it's also dead as well that we would like you to pick those up right uh why would you like us to well, because what we're trying to, we have, we are collecting a database of, of birds and we have an annual display of birds. And we also um, want to check to identify the species of birds that are being found, um, how many of which species, whether it's a species at risk. Um, and then we, so we freeze these birds um, for a year and then we put them out on display and then we donate them to universities and museums for research purposes. Okay. Very interesting, thank you. Yeah, and the other thing that's good about that is then we have a database of where there's a big problems. We know that the birds are colliding all over the buildings around Ottawa, but this sort of information gives us something to discuss with building managers when we um, speak to them about implementing bird-friendly design guidelines.